Hello, Osage City Public Library. Rachel Ross, education specialist at the Topeka Zoo, here with another summer learning program relating to animals and the stories they have to tell. Today, we are going to be learning about this cute little guy that I am holding, hog-nosed snakes. Now, the reason that we are learning about hog-nosed sna snakes as we talk about our summer reading theme of Imagine Your Story is because people like to make up their own stories on snakes, and this guy has a pretty cool way of defending himself. So Western hog-nosed snakes, we do have these snakes here in Kansas. Now this is Buddy, he is 17 years old, which he is on the upper end of his lifespan. In the wild, they live about 15 years, and human care, they can live around 20. So he's kind of an older guy, but he still is very active. Now, if you'll notice, he is kind of a smaller snake, and people, when they see these guys, they sometimes think that he is a baby. But western hognose snakes just don't get very big. They get anywhere from two to three feet long, and they're not a very wide snake. But they are good in Kansas to have around because they eat small lizards, small mice, bigger bugs, and they are a predator. So they help control populations of smaller animals. Now, western hognose snakes have some really interesting ways of protecting themselves. The first thing you will notice is his coloring. He is this beautiful earthy color because he is meant to camouflage in with the ground. He lives in our prairies and our woodlands here in Kansas. So being a brown and a gray color allow him to blend in super well with our grasses and our ground. Now, interestingly, if you look at his tail, it kind of looks like the rattle of a snake. This is not a snake that can hurt you. He is mimicking the venomous rattlesnakes, but he is not one that if he were to bite could do you any harm. But it is an extra trick that he has to kind of look like a rattlesnake. Now, hognose snakes, the first thing they're going to do if a predator tries to attack them is they're simply going to try and hide and hope their camouflage works. But if it doesn't, they have some interesting ways of defending themselves that are pretty theatrical in nature. The first thing a hognose will do is they will rear up on the front part of their body and they will puff up their neck to kind of look like a cobra. And then they like to fake strike at their predator. So they have their mouth closed. They don't actually bite, but they lunge themselves at their predator and make it look like they are about to strike. So although they're small, they act almighty, but they don't bite when they fake strike. They're just trying to scare the predator away to leave them alone. Now, if the camouflage doesn't work, the puffing up the neck, the fake striking, what they do next is pretty interesting. Hognose snakes actually play dead. And not only do they just roll over and act like they're dying, they do a whole big show. So if a predator tries to attack him, he will actually roll over on his back, he'll do this big theatrical death, and he'll lay upside down showing his belly. The underside of their belly is actually a black color, and some scientists think that is to make them look like they are rotting or decaying whenever they are flipped upside down, pretending like they are dead. Now, they're not dead, they're not asleep, they are fully conscious or awake when they are doing this. They are simply pretending to be dead. It's kind of like if any of us at home have ever pretended to be asleep in our bed when somebody comes and checks on us, that's what they are doing. But what's interesting about hognose snakes is that they will stay in their dead position until they are 100% comfortable. So there's actually some really fun videos online of hognoses that are playing dead, they're on their back, they act like they're dead, and humans will flip them over and they'll curl right back up and pretend like they're dead. They're really funny snakes to watch, um, but until they're completely comfortable, they will hold that dead position. But of course, they're simply faking it. So that is just one really interesting interesting kind of theatrical way for them to uh, pretend like they are dead and to survive in the wild. Now, one of the reasons why I pulled Buddy out, aside from his really interesting ways to defend himself, is because humans oftentimes are scared of snakes, but there is no need to be. Snakes are good to have around for a variety of reasons. Most of the bigger snakes we have in Kansas eat mice and rats. Mice and rats 
carry lots of diseases that can make us sick. So by having snakes around in your yard, they are cleaning up the mice and the rats and they're killing the diseases that those animals carry. So snakes are important. If one is in your yard, we don't want to kill it. We want to let it be so because it is helping to keep our world free of disease. So what I want to do is I want to take the time to show you guys the venomous snakes in northeast Kansas because if you know which ones are venomous, you'll know that if it's not one you're looking at, it cannot hurt you and it's not one to be afraid of. So in Kansas, we have 42 total types of snakes, and out of those 42, only five are venomous. But we only have three venomous ones in northeast Kansas, in Topeka, and Lawrence, and Osage, and um, all of us in the northeast. Now the first two venomous snakes that you have to watch out for are really easy to identify because they are rattlesnakes. So they have this characteristic rattle on the end of their tail. So if you see this, automatically know it is venomous, stay away from it, okay? However, just because you hear this sound does not mean it is a venomous snake. There are a lot of non-venomous snakes that hit their tails against leaves to make it sound like a rattle when they are threatened. So you can't just hear this sound, you have to physically see the rattle to confirm it is a rattlesnake. But the first one we have in Northeast Kansas is the timber rattlesnake. Now, timber rattlesnakes, they are long, they are gray and brown, and they have an orange line down their backbone. It's one of the easiest ways to identify them is look for the orange line down their backbone. They also have the rattle. So if you see it, you can instantly know it is a timber rattlesnake. Now, this is a protected species in Kansas. So if you see one, you can't hurt it. These guys are rare. We don't have very many of them, but um, just give them a little bit of caution if you see one. They're they're not going to chase you. They don't want to hurt you, but um, they are venomous. So just give them a little bit of a berth if you happen to see one. Now the next one that we have is also a rattlesnake, and this is the Massasauga rattlesnake. So this rattlesnake, um, they like to live in rocky areas, and they're a little bit more common in Kansas than the timber rattlesnake. They are gray and brown, and they again have the rattle on the end of their tail. So this is the Massasauga rattlesnake. Now the final venomous snake that we have in our area does not have a rattle. It is what we call the copperhead. Now copperheads, um, they are the most common and the least venomous of the snakes that we have. And the easiest way to identify them is to look for the Hershey's Kisses. Just like those candies that we love to eat as a treat, these guys have what looks like Hershey's Kiss markings all over their body. So you can see I'm pointing to one here or to one here. So it does not have a rattle, but if it's a light brown with dark brown Hershey's Kisses, that is a copperhead. It is venomous. Stay away from it. Now there is one other snake that I want to show you. In Northeast Kansas, we do not have cottonmouths, also known as water moccasins. These are only found in our southeasternmost county, in Cherokee County. We do not have these up in Topeka, Osage, Lawrence, places like that. But what we do have are northern water snakes. Now these are harmless, um, but they do kind of look like uh, water moccasins and they do swim. Okay, so it's not venomous, but they kind of have a similar pattern. So if you see this, just know it cannot hurt you. Now you guys, one of the most common snakes that you will see in Kansas are the long black ones. Those are black rat snakes, they cannot hurt you. Um, they do love to climb trees and they love to eat mice and rats. So if you see one of those guys, don't worry about them either. Oh look, Buddy's wrapped around me. What a silly boy. <laughs> what are you doing, Buddy? Okay. So you guys, the reason that I love talking about snakes, and not just here, but in every part of my job, is because people think that they solely exist to chase you around the house, to bite you, to hurt you. But snakes are vital to our ecosystems. Not only are they predators and control populations of smaller animals, they're also in the middle of the food chain, which means a lot of bigger animals, like hawks, rely on snakes for food as well. They're not evil. If they are in your yard, they are there helping you. And even if you have a venomous one, please don't harm it. 
Copperheads, for instance, their venom is being used in breast cancer research. So there is a lot of good that comes from venomous snakes. They can't help their venomous. Of course, give them some, you know, some space. We don't ever want to try and pick one up, but snakes in general are very important. So I hope this lesson today helps you learn which ones can hurt you, which ones can't, and so we can uh, go around and appreciate our wonderful snake friends that we have in our state. So Osage City Public Library, I want to thank you guys so much for listening today. Enjoy the rest of your summer reading program, and we hope to see you at the zoo soon.